What's up, my name is Technoba here for Troubleshoot and welcome to this incredibly quick, fast-paced optimization guide for Apex Legends. By the end, you should have a much better performing game. Note that while this guide is mainly targeted at the Steam release, all of these changes will apply to the origin release of Apex Legends as well. Speaking of Steam release, just keep in mind that before we get into this guide, the new Steam release has a very widely spread, well-known bug, where if you have more than 100 or so friends, the main menu lags to pieces. This is not possible to fix unless you unfriend everyone. Rather wait for EA to fix this by themselves. So let's get right into the guide. This guide is split into two parts, Windows and the game. Let's start with Windows. Number one, make sure that Windows is up to date and your graphics card driver as well. I'm not going to show you how to do that here as it's really simple. Number two, simply hit start and then type in GPU. We'll open up graphics settings and you'll see this window over here. Simply make sure hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is turned on, scroll down and then look for graphics performance preference. From here, simply make sure desktop app is selected and then click browse. From here, we'll navigate across to where the game is installed. To find that, simply open up Steam, right-click the game, hover over Manage, and click Browse Local Files. This will open up a new file browser dialog, and you'll find exactly where the game is located. For me, it's in eGames Steam, Steam Apps Common Apex Legends. So I'll head across here inside of this open dialog. Then I'll double click on r5apex.exe and it'll be added to the list over here. Once it's been added, simply click options and then select high performance. This will be incredibly important to you if you're using a gaming laptop and you see your integrated GPU under power saving. If it's on one of these top two, it may pick that one instead of your dedicated graphics card, leaving you without a ton of performance due to not using the correct hardware in your PC. Next up, we'll be disabling game mode. Simply press start and then type in game mode. Open up game mode settings and inside of here, we'll be turning off game mode. Then head across to the captures section and turn this off as well by simply pushing all of these sliders to the left. Then head across to Xbox game bar and turn this off as well. By doing this, we're going to give ourselves the best performance possible. Note that if you do use the capture feature over here, you may want to skip this step. Then let's head across to where the game is once again. Steam, right click Apex Legends, manage, browse local files. Inside of here, we'll be locating r5apex.exe, right click it and then click properties. Head across to the compatibility tab and simply make sure to check disable full screen optimizations. Then also click change high DPI settings and tick this box at the very bottom, select application and then hit OK. Apply and OK once again. Now we're done here. Let's minimize this for now as we'll be returning here in just a moment. Right click on your desktop and click NVIDIA control panel. This is of course specific to NVIDIA users. If you have an AMD graphics card, you can skip this section. Simply make sure that you're on the adjust image settings with preview tab and make sure that use the advanced 3D image settings is checked over here. Then click manage 3D settings and click across to program settings at the very top. Now we'll simply locate Apex Legends on this list over here. Unfortunately, it's not on the list for me. So I'll click add and either locate the game in this list over here of recently used applications as such, or I'll click browse and double click on the EXE once again. I'll click add selected. Now inside of here, we have a whole bunch of options. Of course, you may have more or fewer settings than I do, as you may have a different graphics card to me. Simply copy and paste all of these settings that you see on my screen onto yours where applicable. As you can see, use global setting appears before all of these options here. Simply just ignore that and care about what's inside of the brackets as such. I just have my global settings optimized, so all of these program settings over here are optimized as well. Simply change your settings so that they look like this. Just make sure to pause the video while you're copying across. There we go. Now hit apply and then you can close out the NVIDIA control panel. Next up, we'll be cleaning up our temporary files, cache and more. Hit start and type in disk and then click on disk cleanup. Then we'll select our drive with Windows, i.e. C drive and click OK. We'll wait for this to scan all of our temporary files and rubbish files. Make sure to check everything on this list and then click OK. Delete files and it'll run through, clear our caches, empty our temporary folder, recycle bin and more. Once it's done, simply type in disk and open up disk cleanup once again. If you have the game on a different drive, make sure to select it now. I have it on E drive. Hit OK and wait for it to scan through once again. Check everything on the list and click OK, followed by delete files. Once it vanishes, we're done here. Next up, if you haven't already, we'll be enabling the ultimate power mode configuration on your PC. If you have this enabled, skip across to the next step. Otherwise, press start and then type in power. Open power and sleep settings, then click additional power settings. Then you'll see this window over here. If you see ultimate performance, make sure to select it. Otherwise, if you don't, check the description down below for a line of code. Simply copy that, press start, type in CMD, 
click Run as Administrator, paste it into here, and then click Enter on your keyboard. After doing that, a new power scheme should appear over here called Ultimate Performance. Simply select it, and then we're done here. We're done with the Windows section. Before we get into the game, let's add some launch options. So open up Steam, right click the game, and then click Properties. Then on the General tab, make sure to click Set Launch Options. We'll be adding hyphen high to force the game to run at high priority mode meaning it can take as much power from our PC as it wants to run its best. Then we'll add space hyphen dev to skip the intro screen, that loud and annoying thing at the beginning when you start up the game. Then hit space once again, and I'll type in force no vsync, as well as space minus full screen to force full screen mode without vsync enabled. Of course, if you do use vsync, if you experience screen tearing, make sure to skip force no vsync and only add full screen. For most people, vsync is unnecessary and just adds extra input latency. Then hit space again and type in FPS underscore max space zero. For computers that are especially low end or of course edge cases, such as the game using all of the power in your computer, leaving none for something like OBS to capture stably, you may not want to use this. Instead, you'll write in the FPS for your screen, such as 144 or slightly higher than that. Of course, if you want unlimited frames for the best gameplay performance, you can type in zero. Otherwise, some edge case PCs could experience stuttering from this, so you may want to remove this if you're worried about it. Hit space once again, and for low-end computers that need to worry about CPU usage, you can add hyphen threads, space, followed by a number, which will force the game to use a specific amount of threads. By default, it uses as many as possible. For medium and high-end PCs, leave that out. Speaking of medium and high-end PCs, you can add hyphen preload to preload a lot of textures and assets to help improve performance in-game, but this can cause stuttering on some computers trained for RAM or VRAM. Then we'll hit space once again and add CL underscore show FPS space 1 if you'd like to see an FPS counter in-game. Of course, only use this if you don't want to use an overlay like Steam and want to see FPS in-game. I personally use the Steam overlay, so I'll remove that. Then we'll add plus Mat mat underscore compressed textures space one. This loads compressed textures for the best optimal performance in game. Then we'll also hit space once again and type in plus cl underscore ragdoll underscore collide space zero. This disables ragdoll collisions, which means that if bodies fall onto other bodies or strange objects, it could cause quite a bit of lag because they have to figure out how to fall. Of course, in a competitive game, this isn't something that's really necessary, so disabling it can help add some extra FPS while in a fight. Then, of course, if you like to use the console in-game, you can add hyphen console. And if you followed my guide on getting, say, Japanese audio, you'd need to add that Miles language here again. If this is the first video of mine you're watching, you can check the description down below for a link to that guide where you can keep your English or any other language UI, but have the voices in-game in a completely different language. Anyway, now that we're done here, I'll click OK to apply all of these, and I can close out of the launch properties. Next up, we'll be launching up the game to change some settings in-game. After you make it to the main menu, simply click the Options button in the bottom right and head across to Settings, followed by Video. Once on this page, there's some obvious things at the very top that will change first. Set the display mode to full screen for best performance and make sure that resolution matches the physical resolution of your display. Lowering this will make the game blurrier, but will improve FPS quite dramatically. Field of view also affects FPS quite dramatically at anything above 90, the default. Why? Well, because you have more items and things loaded on your screen at once while you're playing the game. The less you have loaded, the more FPS and stability you have. I keep this relatively high as I like a high FOV, even if this comes at the cost of performance. Scrolling down to advanced, let's run through these. Number one, you should have vSync off unless you experience screen tearing. Having it turned on simply adds extra input lag from your mouse to your screen. Adaptive resolution target should be set to zero. Anti-aliasing can be set to none or TSAA as it makes barely any impact. Of course, if you're on a super low-end PC, you may want to set this to none. Then, texture streaming budget is rather interesting. You'll need to find out how much VRAM your graphics card has and match that here. Texture filtering I like to keep very low as this can have a big performance impact. But a lot of people say that you should have this setting over here, texture filtering, basically match the texture streaming budget up here. When you're loading tons of textures, you can of course sharpen them and make them look better by running them through a filter here. Say you have only 6GB of VRAM, you'll drop this down one setting as well, all the way down to the minimum here. 
I, of course, don't mind having default textures that aren't filtered at all when I'm playing. That, of course, means a little bit more FPS in-game, and having more objects loaded at once can help the game be more smooth, assuming you have enough VRAM to actually have it this high. If you're experiencing stuttering, you can try turning this streaming setting down and the texture filtering down as well. I keep mine here for the best performance. Of course, I am running a 1080 Ti, so having it this high is fine. Then, ambient occlusion can be set all the way down to disabled without any real notice in gameplay. It can, of course, take quite a bit of FPS away from your PC at a higher setting. Sun shadow coverage can be set to low, sun shadow detail also to low, and spot shadow detail all the way down to low or disabled as well. Shadows are blurry in real life and almost unnoticeable after getting used to them. So having more blocky shadows in game will be something you'll have to get used to, but it does have a huge performance impact when you are, and when you're playing at a distance as you mostly are inside of a battle royale game, this is really unnoticeable. Scrolling down, we have volumetric lighting. For most computers, you can turn this off as well as dynamic spot shadows as they both have to do with lighting. Volumetric lighting can be enabled or disabled, but there could be a competitive edge that you could snag by having less distracting sun rays and sunbeams coming into your game, as well as performance that you can snatch back by disabling it. Dynamic spot shadows are where the lights in the game can move. Having this disabled will give you the best performance and you won't notice too much different. Then, model detail could be set to medium or low for really low-end computers, but medium is probably fine. You don't need it at super high, as not everyone and every object you're looking at the game will be directly in front of you. So, having slightly worse textures at a distance is probably much better than high quality textures that are tanking your FPS that you can't fully appreciate because they're not right in front of you. Effect details are how detailed visual effects like explosions are. Most of the time, you can drop this to medium or low for really low-end computers, but medium's usually good. Impact marks can be set to low for lower-end computers as well, or even completely disabled if you think bullet holes are going to make an impact for your CPU, assuming you have a really low-end CPU. Of course, for me, with a higher-end CPU, having this set to high or low is what you'll keep it at. I'll keep it at high. Then at the very bottom, ragdolls, you can turn this all the way down without worrying about gameplay impact. All this does is calculate where bodies and I think items fall just to make them look prettier when they do. You don't necessarily need this all the way up in a competitive game. Now that we've reached the bottom of these settings, simply click apply and we're basically done here. Now you should be getting much higher FPS in game, but of course not the main menu as this is currently a glitch as I explained earlier. But anyways, that's about it for this Apex Legends optimization guide. Hopefully you found something useful in it. My name's been Techno, but here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.